ஹாய் வெல்கம் பேக் டு அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் தி ஹெச்டிடிபி யூஆர்எல் ரீரைட்டிங் மாடிஃபையர் ப்ரீ ப்ராசஸர் ஸோ வி வில் சி ஹவு இட் ஒர்க்ஸ் அண்ட் வாட் அண்ட் ஒய் டு வி நீட் டு யூஸ் ஹெச்டிடிபி யூஆர்எல் ரீரைட்டிங் மாடிஃபையர் ஸோ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் லெட் சி ஹவு டு ஆட் this http url rewriting modifier and before that this is me your son shunmugam i welcome you all to little sly youtube channel if you have not subscribed yet please do subscribe to our channel like comment and question your feedback in the comment section so first let us see an example of how or why to use this http url rewriting parameter so for example like we have an application the pet store application and here we navigate through different pages and everywhere we can see the j session id whenever we go to any pages so i believe you can see the screen here where you can see the j session id so what does this do or how does this http rewriting modifier helps us is so for any stateless http protocol and web servers the use of this url rewriting parameter that we are going to see today will store this session id instead of cookie and add that to every request of that thread group for example if we have different thread groups so automatically this pre process that we are using today will add the value or add the session session id to the thread group and in fact this modifier can be attached to select requests and it will modify only the session id or whatever data that we add and as we know that this http protocol and this web servers are stateless which means every request and response are independent so every request we select here are completely independent and it cannot be identified by a previous requests but we need to know that if a request is coming from the same user or it's coming from a different user as their previous requests and using this we need to be able to properly process all the records that come from the same user for example i have five different users who log in at the same time but we have to make sure that i choose whatever i select so if i am selecting only fish all the fish into my cart so only those item has to be in my cart not any other items for example if the other person is choosing all the dogs section so only those has to be inside his cart and this is how or this is what this cookie value that we see here this session id value that we see here will do it so let now see how to do this in the script so let's go to the jmeter and let me open the templates and under under the templates i am choosing a recording so this is a quick way to create the script i'm clicking on create and here we have the script so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to remove this recording controller as i'm just going to create the scripts on my own i'm removing this one and now i'm adding a http request and under this http request i'm adding the first page so we can either record the script or we can either do this way so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create this request which is the https request and it's a get request so this is the path and then let's add the next http request under this and now we will choose we'll click on this enter the store button and we will navigate to the next page which is the catalog.action and i'm choosing the request url and let me paste it here and as we all know i have to remove everything that comes after the .com and i'm moving it to the path and the protocol is again https so here we can see we could see the j session id so what we are going to do now is we are going to add the pre processor and that is http url rewriting modifier and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to select the value here which is the j session id i'm just copying it 
and I'm creating I'm adding that as a session argument name because this is the one that we are going to pass or we are going to carry over as I said already and then I'm going to choose cache session ID so I, I will just take you through whatever we have here and then let me add the next request to the third group which is the next HTTP request and that is I'm clicking on fish and then we will again take this URL and everything that we have here are HTTP requests so let me give the protocol here and then the server name or IP then let's go to the next URL which is I'm selecting an angelfish and let's copy the request here and let's add another request the sampler using the sampler let's move this section to the path now let's click on add to cart so these are the previously stored items but when we create in the script we can see only the item that we are going to do now so we have added the item so let me just take that request and I'm adding another request here HTTP request so even either we can create add it as item in the path or even we can create it as a parameter and we can enter it so let me enter the HTTPS let's now again go back and click on proceed to checkout and let me take that request as well let's create another request using the HTTP request so now we are ready so what we will do now is let us run the script and before that let me take you through whatever the items or the attributes we have here so the first one which is the session argument name so this is the name of the parameter that we grab from the previous response so from this response we are grabbing it and this modifier will find the parameter anywhere that it exists on the page and grab the value which is assigned to it whether it is an HTR, HRF, href or any form and this is a mandatory attribute to this http url relating modifier and then next one is the path extension where we have an option of use colon as a separator so some web apps that we use or that we test rewrites the url by appending a semicolon plus the session id parameter so by checking this box we can use that option and this is an optional attribute so we can either have it or we can either we remove it if we do not want and the next one is do not use equals in the path extension so some again some web apps rewrite the urls without using equals sign between the parameter name and the value and again this is an optional attribute and the third one is do not use question mark in the path extension which prevents the query string to end up in the path extension so that is again an optional attribute the fourth one is cache session id and so if we want the value of the session id to be saved for later use when the session id is not present so we can use it and this is again a mandatory attribute and the fourth one is url encode so url encode value when writing parameter and this is again an optional attribute so what we will do now is let us have one thread with one loop count and we will have this view results tree to check the results so i'm going to start the test and we will see how does it work and here we can see we, we could see an error here in the third request and let's see what happens so since we have misplaced this request under the second HTTP request where we do not have the cookie values to pass so what we will do now is we will move this so we can see here so there is no value in the request and 
can see that in the response but still what we can do is we will move that to the next HTTP request and now when we run the test we can see it should work fine so here you know one of the requests that is failing so we can see here that is one additional t has added to https and i think that could be an issue so let's run the script again and see how does it work yes and that is the reason that is it is failing so here we can see the j session id that we have triggered or we have extracted from the previous response so you can see here that has been highlighted and let us see the response data and see here you can see we can see here that the item is added so what we will do now is let us run a five loop count and let's see how does it work so when we run the script so we can see here in the fifth request we can see here five quantity has been added and the main reason is we can see here that there is one session id that has been used across the entire session and in fact this actually happens only with one thread so for, for example if i am adding five users with one iteration so let's see what happens so here we can see after five users have executed and when we go to the response data so here we can see there is only one quantity added to each of the users so which means that the session has not been passed to the different users or different threads so this is how this http url rewriting works so this actually helps so this http url rewriting parameter secures the web application using the cookie data for the session management and on in fact the other hand there are still a considerable number of web applications that uses the url rewriting technique for the management of their session information and although this has some potential risks which is the session id but there are still several advantages which we have seen here of using this technique so for even for in this example like a client browser's cookie is disabled it still works so the other advantages by using this url rewriting the users see simpler urls and this helps search engines and the sites is indexed more accurately and in fact again we we could, we could see here that this j session id has helped the script to pass the value everywhere for that particular thread or that for the, that particular user and in fact we'll just make one more change and we'll show it to you so what happens if i am choosing this path extension and let me when i'm running the script i'll show you what happens so here you can see this particular request failed because it takes this percentage 3 inside the 3b inside the request where if we see the actual request here we can see that after this est1 there is this value that comes in which throws an error because we pass the j session id but this value is not required but in case if there is a requirement of using the semicolon as a separator we have to use but in our case we do not want the semicolon as a separator so if we we have removed it and if we run it again we can see that that particular request has worked so we can see here that percentage 3b is not being displayed here which is the replacement of this semicolon value so i believe this video would have been very useful to you we will meet with another interesting and informative video in our next session until then it's bye, -bye from us in shanmugam and little's law please don't forget to subscribe to our channel bye